Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be covering a very exciting topic in deep learning, which is generative adversarial networks. Now this concept of generative adversarial networks started in 2014 by Ian Goodfellow and this has been seen massive amount of applications in the real world. It has been getting a lot of investments by research groups and companies that are trying to build applications using it. And for beginners, it is a complex topic, but I'm very confident that by the end of this video, you're not going to have any doubts about what GANs are, how they're used, how the training process is done, what can you build using it and everything you need to know about its internal workings as well. So do watch this video till the end. And if you do find it helpful, do like this video and subscribe to this channel because it motivates me to put out more videos uh, regarding similar topics. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Now with any concept, the first thing that I do in my videos is to break it down. So let's break down each term individually in generative adversarial network and see why it's called the way it is. So first of all, what's generative about them? Why is it called generative? The reason it's called that way is because it's typically used to generate images that resemble real images. So here's how a generator model works. As an input to the model, you provided some random noise from a particular distribution. So most commonly we use a normal distribution like I've shown in the figure, but you select data points from this as the input to the model and using that input, it's able to generate a realistic looking image. So the faces that you're seeing on the right hand side are images that never existed that have been created by a GAN. Now initially this might seem very confusing for a beginner because you might be thinking how can we take some random numbers and just make an image out of it. But if you think about it a little more, but if you pause and think about it a little more clearly, it makes absolute sense because what is an image? It's just a bunch of pixels arranged together. A pixel is just a number, right? Which, which denotes the color or the intensity of the image. And if you just take random numbers, put it on the screen where each number is representing the pixel, you will get some image. But if you arrange the numbers randomly, you will get a random image, which might make no sense to a human. So the GAN just arranges the numbers in a way which looks real to a human. Of course, there will be some real images in the data set for the complete model to know what an actual image looks like for reference. So that is what the generator model does. It takes some data points or noise from a particular distribution, constructs it to an image which looks real. A very important component, and this is gonna make much more sense when you look at the second part of the network, which is why it's called adversarial. So let's get to that. What's adversarial about them? So of course, the generator generates fake images which look real. And the fake images is given to another model, which we call as a discriminator. Now the discriminatory model is a basic binary classification model. It will be shown some real images. For example, if, if we want to generate faces, it will have a training set which contain real human faces and it will get as input the fake images generated by the generator. All it has to do is basically say if a given image is real or fake. Based on that, it gives the output. So you can basically see there is a rivalry between the generator and the discriminator. The generator is trying to generate fake images that fool the human eye, but the discriminator prevents it from doing so. The discriminator will tell when an image gen being generated is fake and when an image is real. So there's a constant competition between two where both of them are trying to overpower each other. Now again, to give you a similar analogy of making you understand this entire adversary between them, let me show another example of, of let's say a criminal and a cop. The generator model is the criminal in this case and the discriminator model is the cop. The job of the criminal is to generate fake money, right? So let's say initially the criminal is very bad at generating fake images. He generates a fake image that looks like this on the top. And the cop is very easily able to tell that this is a fake and rejects it. Now the criminal takes this feedback into consideration and next time he comes up with a more realistic looking uh, money note or a currency. But let's say the discriminator is still able to say that this is still fake. And over a period of time, the criminal is getting better and let's say finally he becomes able to generate 
currency which looks completely real and the discriminator gets fooled. But notice, as the criminal is getting better at generating real money, the cop is also getting better at distinguishing between real and fake money. And because of this rivalry between the criminal and cop or the generator and the discriminator, we get two very efficient models which are great at doing their jobs. Now let's look at a bit more detail on how exactly the training process takes place for a GAN. In my future videos, I'll show you the coding examples as well, which we can use to create your own GAN models. So the training process is pretty simple. So let's look at the generator and the discriminator separately. The discriminator, as I said, is a basic image classification model. So you give it real images from the training set and you give it fake images, which were generated by the generator. All it has to do is output zero or one based on whether it was fake or real. So the desired output is when you give it a training image, the output should be one or real. When you give it a generated image, the output should be zero or fake. So this is a basic binary classification model. We use a sigmoid function in the last layer of this network, which basically outputs a zero or a one. This, the loss function, we typically use negative log loss function, which is common in binary classification tasks. Now this was just a discriminatory model. Now let's look at the generator model. The generator model, as I said, it takes some noise from distribution, generates a fake image, passes it to the discriminator and we get an output. Now, if you want a good generator, if you want to train it to be good, the desired output should be always real. So whenever an image is, whenever a generator is sending the image to the discriminator, if it was a good generator, the discriminator would have gotten fooled into thinking that the image was real. Whenever we train the generator, we want the output to be one. So here's what you have to note. In the process of getting a good generator, we don't want to mess up the discriminator or its parameters. So an important thing that we do is we freeze the weights or freeze the parameters of the discriminator model when the generator is being trained. So this is something that we do in the training process, which you'll see in the code samples of a lot of GAN models as well. Now, talking about the architecture of the generator, we typically use a deep convolutional neural network. When we use a CNN for the architecture, it's called a deep convolutional GAN. And uh, the output layer has the activation function of TANH typically, which basically gives you an output of minus one to one, which basically represents the normalized version of the image. If you don't know what these functions are, you can just check out my video where I've talked in detail about the different kinds of activation functions we use and I've drawn a comparison between all of them as well. So now that you've understood how, what a GAN model is, how the training exactly happens, let's look at a few very cool applications of GAN as well. The first obvious application is of course to generate realistic images. That is the, that is what a GAN is good at. So another promising uh, example of GAN is in the application of image to image translation. It basically converts image from one domain into another domain. So this is a very interesting example on YouTube where it has converted the video of a horse into that of a zebra. So this is done using a particular form of GAN called a cycle GAN, but again, a very promising uh, application as well. Another example application of GAN is to generate frontal face views. So the goal is that if you give it a side views of a particular person, it's successfully able to generate what his frontal face could be look like. So you can see in center, the side view of a person and on the left and right is two frontal faces generated by different GAN architectures. So again, a very useful application, particularly in surveillance and facial recognition applications, because most facial recognition applications perform best on frontal face view and not on side views. So this is also, again, example of where GAN can generate realistic looking images. Another example, text to image translation. If you think about it, normal GANs are converting uh, data points from distribution into images. So the same concept can be extended to convert text into images using a combination of natural language processing and computer vision. So the example that you're seeing over here is a text description that you give to a model. So you can see that it says this bird is red and brown in color with a stubby beak. So it extracts the features, it extracts the word bird, red, brown, color and a stubby beak 
and it generates different images. So the images across the column are images generated by different GAN architectures. Similarly, you can see for different kinds of text description, it was able to generate realistic looking birds based on whatever description it has got. So these are some of the applications that GAN is prominently being used in. There are way more examples as well. And in my future videos, I'll also try to show you how to build some of those applications using Python. But that was all for this video. If you did like it, do like this video and subscribe to this channel and see you again in the next video.